This is the last video of Unit 3.2 um, under exchange rates. In this video, I'm going to compare between exchange rate systems. I'll also discuss the consequences of having an overvalued or an undervalued currency. So I should have done this in the previous video, but I forgot because I'm human. I'm going to examine the possible consequences of overvalued and undervalued currencies. Basically, an overvalued currency is when the value of your currency is artificially much higher than it would be if it was left to market forces. So if your currency is um, a very, if its value is too high compared to what it would be if it was a floating exchange rate system. An undervalued currency is the opposite. If your currency is artificially, its value is kept too low compared to what it would be um, on the foreign exchange market in a floating exchange rate system. So. Um, the consequences of an overvalued currency. First of all, you'd have um, cheaper imports, so consumers can import more. And it also reduces the inflationary pressures on the economy because a lot of economies import raw materials. So if these raw materials and components are cheap because they're imported, this doesn't put cost push inflationary pressures on the economy. And domestic producers are forced to be more efficient, so they actually compete with imports. Um, the trade-off, though, is that it hurts export industries. So your export industries may um, struggle because of the overvalued currency, and it could negatively affect the balance of payments. If the economy is importing too much and not exporting enough, the balance of payments um, deficit could get worse. You'll understand this more when we actually um, study the balance of payments topic. What about the consequences of an undervalued currency? Well, um, you'd be able to have more exports. So a lot of countries that have huge export um, industries uh, prefer having a bit of an undervalued currency. This will create more employment and growth in your export industries, and it keeps your balance of payments deficit under control, could even push it into a surplus. The trade-off, however, is that imports are too expensive, and if the country relies on a lot of imported raw materials, this could lead to cost push inflation. So you can see in both scenarios, there's always a trade off. And um, there's no, uh, si there's no situation that is um, absolutely better. It really depends on the um, context of the country and its priorities. Now I'm going to compare and contrast a fixed exchange rate system with a floating exchange rate system. Now the IB syllabus um, says with reference to the following factors, four factors. Number one, the degree of certainty for stakeholders. I created a bit of a um, spectrum for each. So um, a fixed exchange rate system offers the highest degree of certainty for investors and for consumers and for producers. Because it's fixed, everyone's certain, there's no room for speculation. While a floating exchange rate system offers the least amount of certainty and there's lots of room for speculation. A managed exchange rate system is somewhere in the middle, it offers some certainty. What about ease of adjustment? Well, a fixed exchange rate system is not easy to adjust. The economy is not, um, doesn't adjust automatically to external shocks. So say, for example, oil prices on the international market, they rise. This causes a negative supply shock. Because the exchange rates are fixed, the economy isn't very flexible in adjusting. Um, normally, floating exchange rates, um, exchange rates adjust to sort of like um, buff buffer the economy from those external shocks and the economy can then um, if there's a balance of payments deficit the value of the currency would fall which would hopefully hopefully increase exports and thus bring the balance of payments back to um, balance or to a surplus floating exchange rate systems on the other hand the economy um, adjusts easier to external shocks. Remember, we're talking about ease of adjustment to external shocks. Managed exchange rate systems are somewhere in the middle. What about the role of international reserves? So um, fixed exchange rate systems, um, countries that maintain them have to keep a huge amount of foreign reserves or reserves of foreign currencies. Why? Because they're constantly buying and selling their own currency and foreign currencies to keep that fixed exchange rate. While countries with a floating exchange rate system, they don't need huge reserves of foreign currencies because they're not interfering in the market um, to uh, affect the value of the exchange rate. So there's no need. Remember, keeping this huge reserve of foreign currencies comes at an opportunity cost. There's always a trade-off. Managed exchange rate systems are somewhere in the middle. 
The last um, comparison uh, factor is the flexibility offered to policy makers. Um, obviously, floating exchange rate systems offer a lot more flexibility to policy makers. Policy makers can adjust interest rates, can focus on keeping inflation in check and so on, while fixed exchange rate systems don't offer that much flexibility because um, uh, the government would have to sort of give up or relinquish its ability to use monetary policy to control inflation uh, because that will inevitably affect the value of the exchange rate. So again, um, so a fixed exchange rate system basically gives a lot more certainty and prevents speculation, but it comes at the expense of the economy not being able to adjust easily to external shocks, um, the government having to keep huge reserves of foreign currencies, which comes at a very high opportunity cost, and policymakers not having that much flex flexibility um, because they can't really use monetary policy to combat inflation. Um, a floating exchange rate system, on the other hand, it gives the economy ease of adjustment to external shocks. There's no need for huge reserves. There's lots of flexibility, but the trade-off is there's much less certainty and much more room for speculation. Um, I hope doing it as a spectrum like that can help you get the concept.